Hello friends, today we are going to do this little abstract painting on a 6 by 6 inch Frederick's canvas. Now everything I've used in this painting is completely optional. In fact, while I am going to show you my entire process and give you some instruction, really the focus that I want to have on today's video is the process, not the outcome. So when I started this painting, I had zero idea of what I wanted. I just know that I like my texture, so I'm applying a little bit of modeling paste for the texture. It's not to change necessarily the, the texture of the canvas, but just to add a bit of unpredictable nature to it. So it's just some modeling paste and then I'll let it dry and we can start painting on it. The only other thing I knew I wanted was to include a little bit of gold leaf in the painting. Aside from those two things, I just made everything up as I went along. So the process here was really my goal. I just wanted to, you know, find a little bit of a space where I could create and you know kind of lose myself in the process I didn't want to worry about an outcome so I really used this painting as a bit of a meditation so right there I'm just applying a little bit of yellow oxide for an underpainting I couldn't decide what color I wanted so I went with yellow oxide because it was really close to the gold in the the gold leaf that I was going to use Now, this painting, I ended up calling it here. And the reason I called it here was because it reminded me of a poem by David Wagner called Lost. So you should read that poem if you're not familiar with it. I'll include a link in the video description below. That poem really spoke to me because it's, you know, about a forest, which is one of my favorite places to be. and. This painting kind of looked like an abstract, misty forest to me, but also because the, the poem really speaks a lot about mindfulness, about being where you are and, you know, being aware of the space that you're in and enjoying it for what it is. And that was exactly what I was doing with the process here. I wasn't judging my painting as I was going. I was just enjoying the process, making decisions when I needed to, and you know, if if I didn't like what happened because of my decision, then I just made another decision and covered it up. Here I'm just taking a little bit of matte medium and tacking down some of the some of the gold leaf to the canvas and this was a bit of a chore so I will probably cut some of this out because I spent quite a bit of time doing this and it looks really tedious and it could be really tedious if you allow it to be but I just kind of settled into the process and you know watched each little flake of gold get applied to the canvas and noticed how it covered or how it didn't and instead of letting it be tedious I let it be you know enjoyable and kind of meditative and I think one of the reasons that I haven't been making so many videos lately is because my process in painting for the last few months has been very meditative it hasn't been uh, you know product driven it has not been you know let's sit down and make a painting that looks like this because I need to sell it or because I need to make a video for it you know that has not been my goal at all for the last couple of months and I didn't know how to share that with you and I just kind of decided today that you know if this is how I'm going to be painting at least right now then I might as well share some of that with you. So that's what we're doing today. So you might see a few more kind of abstracty, meditative paintings that I have no clue where it's going from start to finish. 
So I'm just being very gentle tapping down that gold leaf. It can really get to be a mess. If you try and wipe it on or really like smear it down with your brush, it's gonna get tangled up in your brush. It's gonna pull off, it's gonna ball up. It gets really weird. So I'm working in very small sections, lay down a little bit of matte medium. I'm just dunking the end of my brush into the bag of gold leaf and trying to pick up as little as possible really. And then just kind of nudge it into a little spot. See, just really one piece, and I'm not trying to really brush it. I just kind of tap it down with the corner of the brush. Once you're confident that it's kind of secured down a bit, and you've brushed a little bit of matte medium over the surface of it, you can get out a dryer to kind of help all of that dry a little bit faster, but make sure that it's secure before you put the blow dryer on, otherwise it'll just blow all over the room, which could be fun, you know, but just not what I was going for at this moment. I wanna make sure that I cover as much of the canvas as possible Ultimately, that yellow oxide is going to be covered one way or the other, or it's going to kind of get camouflaged with the gold, but I didn't want to leave any big, obvious chunks of yellow in the gold spots. So I'm actually going to skip a bit here. I think you get the point of what I'm doing, and then we can get started painting. Now here I'm just taking a little bit of matte medium and with very light pressure and a flat brush, I'm just swiping that matte medium over the surface of the gold to make sure everything is tacked down. And then I'll get out my blow dryer and make sure it's pretty dry. It doesn't have to be completely dry, but at least pretty dry. And then we can start painting. A Little bit of water from my spray bottle and I'm gonna pick up a bit of unbleached titanium and just kind of start smearing it on. Again, I had no clue what I was going for. So you'll see a few points in the video, I think, where we could probably pass the painting off as about done. And if you were doing it and you got to that point and liked it, you could absolutely call it done. But I just kind of kept pushing and pulling the, the darks and the lights and the colors until I felt completely satisfied with what it ended up looking like. And actually, as you'll see at the end, I did sign it and I decided that I was finished. And then the next morning I came, I came to the studio and looked at it and I thought, no, that needs a couple of adjustments. So at the very end, you see me make a couple of adjustments while the painting is already signed. That is a little bit of transparent raw umber and because it's transparent, I didn't have a problem taking just a little hint of it down over the gold. The gold still shines through a bit. So I get asked a lot of questions about whether or not I use gloves or whether you can use gloves to paint like this. You can definitely use gloves if you prefer. I feel like gloves would make it really awkward, but maybe not. Another thing you can do, and I actually have some on order. I didn't, I wasn't using it here, but I'll be receiving it today. A product called Gloves in a Bottle. I think that's what it's called, is essentially a lotion that creates some kind of a, a film or a barrier on your hands that doesn't allow toxins to be 
absorbed. So I'm going to try that and see how that goes and I will report back to you on the next video. Mostly the reason that I want to be using that product is not because I'm really concerned about the toxins in the paint, although I probably should be, but it's because painting like this has been very drying on my hands because in between each color, I'm you know wiping my hands off quite a bit on a towel to get all of the paint off and then I'm washing my hands a lot and so my skin gets really dried out. You may not always see me using the blow dryer, but if I'm making a dramatic color change, so I went from that unbleached titanium to this uh, transparent raw umber, I did dry it in between. And so even if you don't see me use the dryer, if I'm making a dramatic change from one color to the other, assume that I did dry it and that I did wipe my hand off. I just felt like I didn't want a video that was twice as long because you kept watching me use the blow dryer or cleaning my hands. So again, this video is less about technique and more about you know, being present while you're painting, being aware and kind of observing the process rather than participating in it, if that makes any sense. I'm, I'm not judging as far as, oh, this looks terrible, or maybe I should do this because I need it to look like this. I am certainly making decisions, but those decisions are based more on kind of spur of the moment. You know, I, I want it to be lighter here, but I don't want to use the same color. So I'm going to try parchment, which is what I'm using there. We'll see how parchment looks. And you know, sometimes those decisions worked out and gave me a really interesting effect. Sometimes I didn't like it. And sometimes there was really no difference at all. But you don't know until you try. So that's kind of what I mean about observing is, you know, at, at no point putting paint on the canvas and, and going, ugh. That just ruined it, I should have stopped at this point. Now it looks terrible. How am I gonna fix that? Those are the kind of thoughts that you should not be having at all while painting this way. And if you can get to that point, you can take that into any painting and just not sit down and start painting from a point of, you know, a critical mindset. I just took a little tiny bit of cerulean blue and you need just a little bit more and I'm mixing it in there with the parchment because I want a color that is just ever so slightly blue. It's really not much different but the color shift is enough there that it, it gave a little bit of an interesting effect and I believe ultimately at the end of the painting you can't really see any of that but but I liked the way that it looked and it helped me kind of learn something new and I may use that again in another painting. One thing I like to do to get into the space where I can just, you know, do my painting and not really worry about the outcome is, you might see a little bit later on, I've got headphones on, my, my big, huge, bulky headphones. I like to listen to different podcasts. I don't really listen to music too often when I paint. It doesn't keep me occupied. So I'll listen to podcasts where I'm really interested in the topic and I kind of focus on that. I'm thinking about that. I'm not you know, thinking about what I'm doing so much because I'm engrossed in what I'm listening to. And so try something like that. If you find that you have a hard time getting to that place where you can just paint without being critical, put on a movie or put on a podcast or an audio book, 
something that you can get engrossed in, something that can take up the active part of your mind so that kind of the passive part of your mind can work on the painting. Because I think that for me anyway, that's where a lot of creativity happens is in that, that part of my mind that I don't have a lot of control over. If I allow that to take over and the kind of, you know, analytical judgment part of my mind to be occupied with what I'm listening to, then I just, I have a much easier time just plowing through a painting, enjoying every single step of the process. And a lot of times coming out with a painting that I love. No, it doesn't always happen. You know, sometimes it's just not there. And no matter how much I don't allow my critical nature to take over and, you know, sometimes the painting just ends up being not something that <laughs> would be worth sharing. But more often than not, I find that when I paint like this, it is, and I enjoy it, and I like the outcome so much more. That's just a little bit of Payne's Gray. Just looking for a little bit of contrast. Really like the, the browns and the neutrally light colors and and the dark Payne's Gray, I really like that with that gold. But I am, I do get to the point here in a minute where I think it just needs a little bit more life, a little bit more oomph. So I'm actually gonna do that now with a little bit of transparent burnt sienna. Now these transparent browns, Liquitex makes a whole line of transparent browns and I really like to use them for this because they allow everything under to glow through. I do actually have some Utrecht paints. You can just see them there in the lower left hand corner. And their paints tend to be just a little bit more transparent than the Liquitex paints. So I've been experimenting with them in these techniques too and they work really well. So, you know, in some brands, a color is gonna be more transparent than in others. Just read the back of the tube and it should tell you you know, from brand to brand, whether the color is transparent or opaque. But I really, really love the glow that I get from these transparent browns. And I'm letting some of that burnt sienna go over top of the gold because it really warms it up and gives it a very coppery feel. And the metallic and the color and the texture from the gold still shines through. So as I go along, I put more and more of that burnt sienna over top of the gold. Here I am mixing a tiny point of alizarin crimson with the unbleached titanium to do kind of the same thing I did with the cerulean blue and the parchment. Just get a little bit of warmth into the, the super pale color at the top. And again, that burnt sienna is dry. I did allow that to dry before moving on. I've been taking some classes from a very talented artist friend of mine named Shanna Coons. And we've been talking a lot about, you know, uh, changing color temperature to keep things interesting. You know, even if they're all in the same value, which remember value refers to how light or dark a color is. So even a color within the same value, if we just shift the temperature a little bit, it creates a bit of interest. So that's what I was working on up there at the top. That's why I've got the parchment and the parchment with this tiny hint of blue and the unbleached with a tiny hint of pink. They're all the same value. They're all, you know, very, very pale, but the little color shift in there keeps it from being just a, a solid white wall, an uninteresting white band across the top. I'm still just using that alizarin unbleached mixture there. Adding a tiny 
spray of water when I'm having a hard time moving the paint. I'm not, I'm doing my best not to underbind the paint. You know, I've got the spray bottle held back probably, I don't know, 16 inches from the canvas, quite a ways. And I'm, it's a very fine spray and I'm just giving it one or two quick bursts before, you know, I start smearing it. So I am doing my best not to underbind the paint, but I do need a hint of water just to kind of act as a vehicle to get that paint moving. I've experimented with using matte medium on my fingers, you know, kind of finger painting with the matte medium, but I find that that doesn't really do it. The matte medium kind of sticks to the canvas just like the paint does when I try to move it with my hands. At this point, I really felt like I was almost done with the painting. I was really enjoying what this looked like here and I very easily could have stopped right here. But, you know, I, I kept going making little changes and as I made little changes, I felt like I had to keep making other changes. So I did kind of get carried away, but it was okay. I didn't get upset that I didn't stop there. And ultimately, even though it looks completely different now to how it looks here, I'm very happy with the painting. So I don't mind. I can come back and look at it at this point on the video if, you know, if I ever regret <laughs> taking it as far as I took it. I love the way the the whites, the different whites, really kind of give a smoky effect over everything else. Don't be afraid to overlap colors. Like here, I'm taking that brown right up into all of that light that I just did. If you try to keep everything very separate, you know, you, you stop the dark color right where the light color starts and vice versa, then everything can feel kind of tight and to me it feels a little confined you know you know how you put your fingers together like thread your fingers together think of your colors like that they they merge together one completely overlaps the other and vice versa rather than just you know being very separate and blocked I think I was trying using transparent burnt umber in this part, but ultimately it didn't feel like there was any difference between the burnt umber and the raw umber. So I pretty much just stuck with the raw umber. But again, I was experimenting with both of them to see if I could get kind of that, that hue, the color shift within the same value, but it really didn't make much of a difference. I was doing my best to experiment with different edges. So right there, rather than really blurring that out completely, I left one edge quite hard on the side. I think that that helps make a painting a little bit more interesting. If everything is very, very blurry and there's no firm edge, then it can be hard to, it can be hard to, to look at for very long because there's nothing really to catch your attention. Everything is blurry, so nothing stands out. But if everything has very hard edges and, you know, nothing soft, then it can feel really, you know, aggressive and kind of, kind of jolting. So I like to try and have a mix of, you know, not only 
the, the contrast in values, right? I've got that very, very dark and I've got the very, very light. I've got very, very warm and very, very cool. I've got smoother textures and I've got really crumply, almost staticky texture in the gold. And it's just about finding those contrasts and your edges are a contrast that you need to remember. So have very broken, foggy edges and have very structured kind of harder edges. That is some just titanium white. Everything on this canvas is dry. I'm just gonna add, I'm gonna start adding a little bit of titanium white. I do get a little carried away with it <laughs> and add a bit more than I ultimately want. But again, painting like this, you can go back and forth a trillion times. There's no need to stop at any point. You don't have to stop, you know, and not be satisfied with your painting. If you do something you don't like, dry it, add another layer. I mean, you really could do it until your canvas is just like 8,000 pounds <laughs> full of paint. And, you know, there's, there's no need to stop until you're satisfied. Here I'm also experimenting with another contrast. So a lot of my paint application is very thin, very ethereal. And this white, I'm applying it quite a bit thicker and heavier. And that contrast is gonna be really interesting too. If everything on my canvas were very thin and very, you know, transparent, Again, it will be hard to look at it for very long because you won't really know what to look at. There won't be any interesting point for you to rest your eye on. But that thick white that's very opaque and you can't see through it kind of gives a little spot that's a bit more interesting. And you'll see a couple of times through here where I put some paint on that I didn't really like and all you have to do is just give it a quick spray and then if you wipe up into it, it kind of removes it. So rather than trying to like smear it out, which just spreads it around, swipe up into the body of the color that you don't really like and that'll help remove it a little bit and I'll show you when I actually do that. Here I am using a turquoise color. This is turquoise deep and it's really transparent. It's a very cool color, especially in contrast to the colors that are on my canvas. But I loved this color paired with that uh, burnt sienna, that really orangey, transparent burnt sienna and this deep turquoise I thought made just a gorgeous, gorgeous contrast. And it kind of helped me reclaim a little bit of what I had lost by putting on too much of that white. So see, instead of just obliterating that white and making it dark again, putting this color over it pushed that white down very, very deep. And now it it almost seems like water or, you know, it just, it gave a bit of dimension that I didn't have with the white and that I wouldn't have had if I would have, you know, just obliterated the white, put the Payne's gray completely back over top of it. So when I put that blue on there, I was starting to become super, super happy with this painting. So I know I said, you know, come, at the, come to the painting from a place of non-judgment, but that doesn't mean that you can't, you know, sit back and, and just be pleased. You can be pleased, just don't, you know, just don't be critical. So it's really important not to underbind your paint too much. Try not to spray it down with so much water that it won't stick to the canvas because 
what would happen is if I did that there with the white, if I had underbound that white, when I went to put the blue over it, the white would lift and mix with the blue and then I would just get like a blue fog and I didn't want that. I'm just adding some Payne's Gray here at the bottom. I want to keep that nice and dark. See, again, smearing that Payne's Gray down over top of light colors and warm colors. Not keeping things separate. little bit of Payne's Gray for that section. I want to, oh no, that's the, uh, the transparent raw umber because it works really well with that blue, just kind of gives us those deeper greens. And I'm not going to cover all of that blue, but I did want to deepen it in some spots. A little bit more of that burnt sienna. Right up into that gold. Just makes such a beautiful look. But when I'm rubbing the paint over the gold, I'm barely, barely touching. It's a very light pressure because I don't want to just, you know, smoosh all that color into the gold and, and lose the gold. Still some of that burnt sienna. If you never paint simply for the, the joy of painting and you know, if, if every time you paint it's simply to get an outcome, then I think you miss out on half of the fun of painting. I think that, you know, it, doing something just for the fun of doing it is very undervalued and <laughs> very overlooked. And so, that's my challenge for you with this. I don't want you to sit down and try to create this painting. You won't be able to do it. I wouldn't be able to do it again. Even if I followed every step I did here, I would never come out with this painting ever again. And that's okay. This painting is about a moment that I was having. It's about an experience that I was having. It's not about a product. It's not about you know, an end result that I can impress someone with or that I can sell or anything like that. So I, I want you to just gather whatever supplies you have. Do not, you know, run, I feel like you have to run out and buy any color that I've used here that you don't have. Don't feel like you have to run out and buy a bunch of gold leaf. Don't feel like you have to run out and buy you know, modeling paste or anything like that. I want you to take what you have and just sit down and play. That's it. And do something strictly because you want to, strictly because you want to enjoy your time. 
And if the painting doesn't end up turning out to be something that you like, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Experiences are the things in our lives that, you know, kind of create who we are. It's not objects. Objects don't make you who you are. And once this painting is finished, it's just another object. This painting, while I do, I like it a lot, it is just an object. And if it suddenly burst into flames and disappeared, it would not take away the enjoyment that I felt while creating it. Remember that it is the experiences in our lives that make us who, who we are. It's not the objects that we have. And that's what I'm looking for these days is experiences that I can enjoy, that can contribute to who I am as a person, that can help change me and help me to continue to grow as both an artist and as a person. And this painting did that for me. It helped me to grow as an artist and a person. And like I said, even if it ceases to exist, it still I will still keep those lessons. I will still get to keep that growth. But if I have a miserable time painting this and I hated my experience and I struggled, it really doesn't matter how much I love the painting. The painting at that point is still just another object and it does not contribute to who I am as a person or an artist. It's the experience I had creating it. So I think that right there is what I want you to get out of this painting and, and really out of every single painting. Getting a little bit more of the contrast in the edges here with the Payne's Gray. I was struggling with it just a little. It started fogging out more than I wanted. That spot over there was fighting with me and not giving me a look that I was happy with. So I'm kind of pushing it back into itself. See that? Rather than trying to smear it out, I'm just wiping it with a damp towel, cleaning up a bit of the, the thicker part of the paint and then just smoothing it a little with my finger. think that's better but yeah wherever you don't like try to push it back into the body of paint so I like the streak but I don't want it to fog out so I'm gonna push it into that streak see there rather than dragging it back out to the right I pushed it into the streak into the left and then I was much happier with it little bit more white. I believe that's just titanium white. And again, I'm applying it a little bit thicker in parts, keeping me a sharper edge there. So that's a nice contrast to the dark, the Payne's gray with the sharper edges. but keeping it really thin up here in the other areas so that I don't just paint everything else out. It's a mixture of super, super thin and a little bit thicker. Now I'm gonna use some iridescent bright gold and I'm just kind of burnishing it into the gold, make sure I didn't lose too much of that, but then I'm gonna burnish it up and into some of those darker colors. This color, it says that it's opaque, but I find that it is quite transparent. And it's really nice to give just a suggestion of that metallic glow to everything around it. See how it didn't cover up those darker colors. 
but you can still see the little metallic sheen from it, which I really, really liked. And just using small, small amounts of it, starting on the gold and then burnishing it up into the darker areas. And I don't know if I said this, but yes, everything on this canvas is dry at this point so that I'm not mixing it with the gold. I like this iridescent bright gold because, or iridescent rich gold, I think is the one that I'm using because it's really, it's really close to the color of the, the gold foil. So it doesn't look like two different kinds of gold it matches with it and like the Frederick's metallic canvases the gold canvas this color is perfect to use on those canvases if you want to reclaim a little bit of the gold because it's so close to the color of that canvas so this is really my favorite metallic gold I really felt like it helped make this the gold leaf seem like it was glowing rather than just being you know a static gold leaf that was kind of covered by paint in some places it gives it a little bit of a burst makes it feel a little bit more alive I was really enjoying putting this gold on so I kind of got lost in it and spent a bit of time there. I didn't really like that where I just put that gold in the white so see I wipe I sprayed it with some water and then just kind of wiped it with clean fingers and just kind of smoothed a lot of it out. little bit more white just a, a very thin smear of it and a little bit of I think that's the transparent raw umber helps kind of tap down some of that gold deepen it a bit but it doesn't obliterate it If you don't like finger painting, but you want to try to have, you know, this kind of experience, you can absolutely do this with brushes. Absolutely. Lately, I'm really into kind of having that full, that full, really intimate experience with the paint and being able to, you know, feel the paint and feel the canvas and everything with my fingers is something that really helps me connect to the process I feel like and so that's that's one of the reasons that I've been finger painting so much lately And there you can tell that I signed it. And this is now the next day. I decided that gold was too separate, you know, especially that bit in the middle. So I'm really taking some of that burnt sienna in there and, and warming it up, kind of pushing the bottom edge back down.
working on some of the Payne's Gray now, again, to kind of block out just a little bit of that gold. It just felt kind of polka dotty to me right there. So I'm just softening that look. And then I am done with this painting. I really hope that you guys got something out of this video and that it encourages you to do something, to build an experience for yourself, not worry about an outcome. I think that the more you don't worry about the outcome and the more you enjoy the process, the quicker you will build your skills because you're not letting frustration take over. And, you know, at, at the very least, you'll just enjoy yourself and, you know, hopefully grow as a person as well as an artist. Don't be so focused on the end product. And don't forget to check out that poem. I will leave a link in the video description again. And that was really meaningful to me and really kind of made my day when I found that poem after creating this painting. And also in the video description, you will find a link to where you can get your very own Frederick's canvases. They have been sponsoring me for a little over a year now, and I genuinely absolutely love their canvases. And I really appreciate you guys watching and painting along with me, leaving me comments, and and I hope to get back onto a regular schedule very, very soon. So let me know what you think of these types of videos, and maybe you'll see more sooner than you think. So thank you for hanging out and painting with me today, everyone. I will see you again soon.